This is a guard dog. He also has the cutest little puppy eyes, which you would use to spot intruders and shred them to pieces. So he can go back to being your cuddly, snuggly little fluff ball. Choosing a dog for your family is one of the most important decisions you'll ever make, as many of you dog humans already know. But choosing a guard dog? That needs some serious thinking through. But you know what? Once and for all, we're going to pick the best guard dog for your family. And make sure you stick around to the end, because I'm going to throw you a bone with two super important factors to consider when choosing a guard dog for your family that almost everyone forgets about. This is the Ultimate Guard Dog Showdown. Don't forget to check out the description for some tail waggingly good offers I have for pup parents, and if you wouldn't mind smashing your paw on that like button, that'd be a huge help. Alright, so let's set some ground rules for this doggy showdown. What bones are we going to pick with these pups? We'll look at temperament, trainability, size and energy levels, health and lifespan, and loyalty. So five criteria in total. Now that we've set our ground rules and decided our criteria, let's unleash our contenders. I've handpicked the breeds that are often considered to be top-notch guard dogs, so don't expect to see any golden retrievers doing a guest appearance here. In our lineup, we have the Rottweilers, Belgian Shepherds, also known as Belgian Malinois, German Shepherds, Boxers, Doberman Pinchers, Bull Mastiffs, and a Chihuahua. You see, my cameraman is so smitten with his little Chihuahua that he threatened to go on a shooting strike unless I added a Chihuahua. And not just any Chihuahua, but his Chihuahua, who is named Rot Wheeler. Now every time he says I have to rush home and walk my Rot Wheeler, he enjoys the mixed expressions of fear and awe from people. It's a whole thing. I'm sorry. Let's just get to the showdown. First off, we have temperament. When it comes to standing guard over your family, you want a pooch who's naturally protective, not a loose cannon. The dog should be able to distinguish between a friendly visit from your familiar mailman and a shady character lurking in your yard. And, you know, not start World War III with your cat or your Roomba. First off, we have Rottweilers. Not that ankle biter, the real one. There we go. Rottweilers are confident and generally cool as cucumbers. Now, training plays a big part in this. With the right guidance, they can be excellent protectors of the household. But introduce a stranger without proper introductions, and you're in for some serious side-eye, if not more. Belgian Malinois are as loyal as they come and fiercely protective, but they're a bit on the reserve side and territorial by nature. German Shepherds are brave, faithful, and protective, but they can also be a bit aloof with unfamiliar folks. Then we have Boxers. These fellows are super playful and friendly. They'll get along with everyone, including your goldfish, and their sheer size can scare off any intruders. Doberman Pinsters are protective, sure, but they're also like a kid after too much candy. They've got energy to burn. So handle with care, especially if you might have little ones who might get bowled over during a Zoomies episode. Bull Mastiffs, on the other hand, are big old softies with their families. Gentle and relaxed. But don't let that fool you. They've got some serious protective instincts. And finally, let's pick a champ for this round. Drum rolls, please. Sorry, my bad. Coming in at dead last, we have Rottweiler the Chihuahua. The last time she visited the office, she tried to literally eat me. So that's her temperament. So the winner in this round is the Boxers. In terms of temperament, they have the family-friendly vibes on lock. Runner-up is the Bull Mastiffs, followed by the German Shepherds, Rottweilers, Belgian Shepherds, Doberman Pinchers, and Rottweiler the Chihuahua. Next up, we have trainability. As any seasoned pet parent would attest, an untrained pet, especially a big dog, is about as safe as inviting a grizzly bear for tea. Many large breeds get a bad rep due to lack of proper training, but there is such a thing as trainability. Some breeds are just more responsive to it than others. For a family guard dog, you want a breed that's smart and eager to learn. Remember, training should start early and be consistent throughout the dog's life. Rottweilers are intelligent and receptive to training, but they need a calm and consistent trainer. And obviously, professional help is a big leg up for training any of these breeds. Sometimes YouTube tutorials just won't cut it, folks. German and Belgian Shepherds are renowned for their intelligence and trainability, so much so that they're often the go-to recruits for the police or the military. They're serious people, badges and all. Boxers, those little heartbreakers, are eager to please, which makes them super trainable. But sometimes they can have a little bit of a stubborn streak. Doberman Pinsers and Bull Mastiffs are quick learners and highly trainable, though they require firm, consistent handling, as they can also be a tad stubborn at times. And then there's Miss Wheeler, who has made it very clear that you don't train her, she trains you. So the blue ribbon goes to the German Shepherds, closely trailed by the Belgian Shepherds. Following them are the Doberman Pinsers, the Rottweilers, the Boxers, and the Bull Mastiffs. And at the bottom of the pack is Miss Wheeler. Coming up next is size and energy levels. Over the years, talking with animal shelter folks and canine experts, I've heard time and time again that many dogs end up in shelters because their humans don't do their homework before bringing them home. A tiny, cute puppy that grows into a 125-pound behemoth isn't the best fit for a compact city apartment. Similarly, a dog with the boundless energy of a kid on a sugar rush isn't the best match for a couch potato. A guard dog needs to be big and strong enough to deter intruders, but also comfortable living in your home. 
That's why Rottweilers can be a good fit for most people. They're large and muscular, but their energy levels are typically moderate. Belgian Shepherds are high energy dogs that need regular, vigorous exercise. German Shepherds are similar, but they're a little bit larger in size. Boxers too are medium to large in size and have a high energy level, so regular exercise is a must. If you're looking for someone a bit more chill, Bull Mastiffs are basically potatoes with a fitness regime. They need exercise like we all do, but they're generally not as hyper as some of the others. As for Miss Wheeler, she might only be the size of a soda can, but she's got an ego the size of a Great Dane. The winner in this category really depends on your family's lifestyle and how much canine energy you can handle. But since we're talking specifically about guard dogs, I'm going to give this round to the Belgian Shepherds. They have the right balance of size and energy. Following them are the Doberman Pinschers, German Shepherds, Rottweilers, Boxers, Bull Mastiffs, and of course, Miss Wheeler. Now, I must admit, there's one category where Miss Wheeler might just snatch the crown, and that's health and lifespan. The unfortunate truth is big dogs generally don't live as long as little bite-sized pooches. And some breeds, especially designer dogs, can be more prone to certain genetic health issues. So do your research before you bring a new dog home. Rottweilers can be susceptible to certain health issues and usually live to be around 8 to 10 years old. While Belgian Malinois are typically healthy dogs with a lifespan of 14 to 16 years. German Shepherds can have breed-specific health issues, but with proper care, they can live 9 to 13 years. Boxers are generally healthy and live about 10 to 12 years, the same as Doberman Pinsers, but these little fellows can be a bit more prone to health issues. Poor Bull Mastiffs have a double whammy of breed-specific health issues and a shorter lifespan of about 7 to 9 years, which is just plain sad. As for Miss Wheeler, she is, of course, immortal. Other, less demonic Chihuahuas have a lifespan of about 14 to 16 years. So the winner here, much to my chagrin, is Miss Wheeler. But since she's already spoken for, the prize goes to the Belgian Malinois. Following them are the German Shepherds, Boxers, Rottweilers, Doberman Pinsers, and last but not least, the Bull Mastiffs. All right, so the fifth criteria we have is loyalty. Now, dogs are the most loyal creatures to begin with, we all know this, but loyalty is a complex characteristic that can be heavily influenced by training. You want a dog who says, I'd protect this family, not a dog who says, I'd kill for this family. The first one is a guard dog, and the second one is a negligent homicide waiting to happen. Let me just say that all of these dogs are loyal and can form strong bonds with their families. Belgian Shepherds and Bull Mastiffs can be a little bit too protective at times, but this can usually be addressed with proper training. Miss Wheeler, on the other hand, is loyal only to the Dark Lord. The gold star for loyalty goes to German Shepherds, followed by Rottweilers, Doberman Pinschers, Boxers, Belgian Shepherds, and Bull Mastiffs. And trailing at the rear, of course, is Miss Wheeler. Alrighty folks, now that we've rallied the troops, let's see who takes the crown. Who will be the first among equals? The Guardian of Guardians, the prime pick of the pack, the finest and the fiercest, the top dog. In last place, we have Rottweiler the Chihuahua, for obvious reasons. Claiming the sixth spot, we have the Bull Mastiffs. They're lower on the list due to their mammoth size and somewhat somber health history, but let's not forget. Their endearing temperament and undeniable loyalty make them family dogs par excellence, provided they're well-trained and socialized. Snagging the fifth place spot are the Doberman Pinsers. They're as trainable as a circus seal and loyal as a Hogwarts elf, but their considerable size and energy can pose a bit of a challenge for some families, not to mention a handful of breed-specific health hiccups. And at number four, we have the Belgian Malinois. Sure, they're whip smart and steadfastly loyal, but their high octane energy levels and somewhat intense temperament, if left without proper training, might make them a handful for the average family. Scooting into the third spot are the Rottweilers. With loyalty thicker than their muscular frames and an instinct to protect, they make excellent guard dogs. Their trainability and balanced temperament are commendable, but their hefty size and potential health issues make them the bronze medalist in our lineup. Now we're down to the last two. It's a showdown between the Boxers and the German Shepherds. Who do you think will wear the crown? Or rather, who has earned the throne? Give me your predictions in the comments below. Okay, no more suspense. Landing in second place are the Boxers. They have scored a reputation for having a cool temper and are known for playing well with kids. Their size and energy make them an ideal match for active families. They're quite trainable and obedient, but not quite in the same league as our top dog, the German Shepherds. With their well-rounded profile, they're as close to the canine version of a renaissance man as you can get. They ace the temperament test, score high on trainability, and their loyalty is the stuff of legends. Their size and energy levels strike a beautiful balance. And even though they may face some health challenges, they generally boast a pretty great lifespan, making them stellar family protectors and undisputed champions. But wait! It's not just about temperament or trainability or loyalty. There are two super important factors that most people overlook. They are the drool scale and the zooming frequency. No, I didn't just add this to be cute. When it comes to picking a guard dog for your family, looking at these two things can save you some serious headaches down the line. So here we go. First up is the drool scale. If you're a clean freak, well, dogs in general would be a bit of a challenge for you, but you can have a guard dog and a clean home. This is where the drool scale comes into the picture. 
If you have small children, or if you're someone who's not comfortable with excessive drooling all over your carpets or furniture, you might prefer a breed that's a little bit less likely to slobber. This can also help avoid some slipping accidents, followed by a visit to the emergency room. The drooliest of them all are the bull mastiffs, followed closely by the boxers. Then we have the rottweilers, because the moment it's time for food, it's a waterfall. German Shepherds are not known for excessive drooling, but they have their moments. Belgian Shepherds and Doberman Pinchers keep their drooling under control. Miss Wheeler does not have salivary glands because she doesn't drool over anyone or anything. It's called self-respect. And next up, we have the Zoomie Frequency. To those who may not be aware of the doggo lingo, Zoomies are the bursts of energy that dogs get where they start running around like crazy. This is often seen in dogs with higher energy levels. While it's super fun to watch and you can get a couple of thousand likes on TikTok, they can also be a sign of a dog's need for exercise and mental stimulation. Families that are a bit more active or have a large yard may love a dog with a higher zoomie frequency. On the other hand, for families who are a bit more laid back, zoomies may be a little bit annoying. Belgian Shepherds have a serious case of the zoomies, followed by Doberman Pinschers and German Shepherds, especially when they're pups. Boxers are energetic, but zoomies might not be as intense or frequent. The same goes for Rottweilers. Bull Mastiffs are too laid back to get the frequent zoomies. Miss Wheeler is grace itself and judges other dogs who run around like the idiots they are. Her words, not mine. Although, as a death metal fan, she's not a stranger to the concept. Having said all this, I want you to remember that each dog is an individual. Just like us humans, each dog, regardless of breed, has their own personality. And like I said before, a lot depends on their upbringing. So use this video as a guide, but think about your family, where you live, and what you're like before you bring a dog into your home. Don't forget to subscribe and keep those tails wagging.